little bites things that you can buy also. Um, I forget what they're called. The Arjean, I think. The, yeah. uh, they're the risotto balls. They're stuffed. Yes. And where are, they, where are they located? They're in Selwood okay. on 13th and Lexington. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, in cool. that pod up there. I know. And, Fantastic. Yeah, and Garden State actually. Opening um, a second cart. They're opening a second cart in North Portland. Mm -hmm. um, and just last month, they were showcased on Good Morning America as one of the top four food carts in the nation. They wow. were. And, uh, and they well didn't deserved. win. But didn't they get second, though? They got second. Yeah, yeah. for the, for the uh, chickpea sandwich. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So, so um, if you're from, yeah, no, if you're from outside Portland and watching this and you get when the you chance come to, to, Portland to, on vacation. to come here, check out Food Carts Portland, yeah. figure yep. out all the spots. Call us. We'll take you out. Yeah, it'll be great. And if you are here, try Garden State, seriously. Yeah. That man, <laughs> what he does with food, <laughs> the crab cake sandwich also. Yes. And Your then, husband's still in the room, isn't he? Yeah, okay. yeah he is. Yeah. He knows about my <laughs> indecent love of the food. It comes from that part. Do you get to the food carts, Rick? Not a lot, because there aren't. I'm on the, I'm on the southwest side, and so it's usually a, a trip for me. But, I mean, it, we... He gets to the Whiffies. We manage to make just the whiffies on a regular basis just because the boys are now like, I, I have a couple of young boys and they're like, whenever we have dessert, we want it to be whiffies. So <laughs> we wind up there quite, quite often. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah. Um, so are we about ready? I, I think we're, I think we're going to hand Aaron, off to are you Aaron ready? There. Thanks right. again, Brett, for oh, coming you're welcome. by. So much, really Brett. appreciate Thanks for having it. it. Congratulations, I'm uh, hey, proud of you guys. Aaron. Thank you. <laughs> take it away, man. Thank you so much, Brad. Thanks. You're welcome. Oh, should I take this away? You should not touch the burger. Welcome to the Pulp Stage. You are about to see a sample of our upcoming late night reading series, Pulp Diction. Today's story has been modified from its original version. It has been formatted to fit this screen and edited for the holidays. Meet Marker, a hard-boiled but slightly cracked high schooler, prone to ruminations he does not realize that others can hear. Meet Pamela Swingwillow, a prospective client from a well-to-do family fallen on hard times. Sophisticated, but likes to play rough. Meet Sidney Nib, a British exchange student, eager for his social status to climb, or at least to surface. The setting? A high school computer lab, the day before the holiday break. Marker sits with a window behind him, a wastebasket, and a desk. How many chances do you get to cheat Doom? 
beats me. Depends on what you're dealt, how you play your hand, and it's hard to bluff when you're distracted. I'm not making excuses. I'm just saying the holidays should take part of the blame. For what seems like the one student not interested in watching the Santa Claus 3 in the school auditorium, even this computer lab offers no refuge. I couldn't even open my online blog without having to fight off several free gift pop-ups. I tell you, the holiday hype is being laid on thicker than the drool of a St. Bernard with an overactive pancreas. The day danger knocked on my door. He suddenly picks up his cell phone. Somehow, I always know when trouble comes calling. Well, almost always. He opens the cell phone. Clifford Marker, you rang. Hello! H hang on. Your mobile didn't even ring just now. Nope. Didn't have to. I could sense it. Well, that's quite an arrangement. What's that? A night of derangement? Look, if you're rolling the dice for trouble, mister, you're on a roll. When the words on the other end of the buzzer stopped ringing in my ear brain like satanic sleigh bells, I realized the caller on the other end was Nib, a reporter I knew from the student paper down the hall. Hello? H uh, hello? Uh, wh who who's there? Hey, pal, it's Clifford Marker. You called me, remember? Uh, uh, no, uh, I mean, it, it sounds as though you've got company. Uh, you were talking to someone just now. No, I wasn't. What's the scoop? I would advise you to hold on to your chair and not step on any snakes. I'm calling with a warning. My sources tell me that someone sneaked out of Santa Claus 3 just now. Flew the coop, as it were. He's an old acquaintance of yours. Charles Oscar Dumpstead. Ironically, er, you don't say, huh? Ironically, I'd been plowing through my dossier on Dumpstead last night before the Sandman stamped me first class to the land of dancing sugar plums. With a stack of detentions higher than a cheater's deck, Dumpstead's rap sheet was not exactly boring reading material. But I have had enough enemies that if I lost sleep over them, I'd never catch 20 winks, let alone 40. Who are you talking to? <clears throat> my sources at the movie have texted me that he's hooked up with some of his chums, from his, the snowball fighting days, before you sent him up the river? Nib is English. He tries to sound like one of the rough and tumble crowd, but somehow his Britishism always sneak their way stateside. Uh, uh, hello? Uh, hello? Cliff? Can you hear me? And how? The two eggnog shakes I've been drank last night at Burgerville were reminding me, trying to remind me who is more alive. Me or my loaded blood sugar? I grabbed my hat, dumped out the cards, and pulled down the brim. Uh, uh, who's there? Marker, you called me, remember? Uh, uh, yes, yes, we've been through that. Uh, but you keep talking to someone, or mumbling, or something. I can't really make it out. Uh, are you talking to yourself? Is that it? Sort of thinking out loud? Doing a little skull work, as it were? Well, you could call it that. Thanks for the call, Nib. Uh, one moment. Dumpstead had all kinds of friends in all sorts of influential student organizations. Do you have any idea where he could have gone? Not yet. I'll let you know when it's solid. Very well. I just thought you should know about his escape. We are running a story in the next edition, and he may not be too happy about his newfound fame. <laughs> <laughs> Understated, but understood. And, if I may say, watch your back. I don't want to have to write your obituary, Marker you know. Hangs and incidentally, up. I... come in. The door is unlocked. That's when she entered. She looked familiar somehow. At least, I wanted her to become familiar. My eyes were soaking her up like marshmallows about to dissolve in hot chocolate. She wore a thin gold chain across her ga graceful neck, tinged with the scent of honey. Her eyes glinted in the overcast light seeping through the window. I beg your pardon, are you speaking to me? Uh, not exactly. <clears throat> and, and who might you be, Mrs... Miss Swingwillow. Pamela Swingwillow. Are you Marker? On your mark. Get set and go. 
Mind if I smoke? You're already smoking in my book, Angel. Go ahead, fumigate to your heart's content. I need the services of a good detective. And you came highly recommended. He lights her cigarette. What seems to be the problem? I think someone is planning to ambush my little brother. Why don't you just go to the assistant principal? He can't handle the resulting publicity. He doesn't know I've come here. I need to be discreet. Fair enough. But what makes it my business? This makes it your business. She the kind of week I've been having, I have expected her to produce a list of trumped up charges from my foggy past. But instead, she handed me a couple of C notes. What did you say? Nothing. I distinctly heard you talking just now. If you're going to be rude, I can take my business elsewhere. I was about to say, elsewhere it is. Until I remembered my cash flow. It was about as robust and plentiful as a mint tea filtered through 20 sheets of gift wrap. I wish you'd quit looking away from me and mumbling. If you're going <clears> to speak <throat> gibberish, at least look at me while you're doing it. Wait a minute. Can you read my mind? I don't know. Something tells me that if I could, it wouldn't bring tidings of comfort or joy. Don't be too sure about that. But as for the proposition, I mean the business proposition at hand. What makes you think your kid brother is in danger? I got this note. I think it may be blackmail. She pulls the note out of her fishnet stockings. Sure is something. Hmm, fine print. Looks like there's some sort of watermark. Why don't we step over to the window to see it better? Why not? Ah, the air is fresh from the recent snowfall, but it makes me cold. Hold me. They embrace and kiss passionately. Can you read between the lines, Mr. Marker? Hmm. Time to pay up, it says. Sign C-O-D. Suddenly, oh. a thump fills the air. Marker slides down into his chair. Swing Willow leans over him. An ice ball through the window, but I don't get it. COD, cod. Try. Sounds fishy. Try again. COD, collect on delivery. You could say someone is collecting on a debt right now. I got it. COD, Charles Oscar Dunstan. I should have known it was a trap. This is for all the Sundays you made him spend in detention, Mr. Marker. Now you're the one who's spent. So the story about your brother was just a white elephant gift? Well, you're quite the little elf. Nobody can cheat doom when it comes to gams like yours and stockings. I stuck my thumb in and pulled out a lump of coal, didn't I? Maybe we should call you little jackass Horner. If only I had another chance. Another card on my sleeve. I mean, somehow I always know when trouble comes calling. Well, almost always. He faints. Blackout. We go to scene two. Rewinding to the same position we were in in scene one. Scene two. The same as scene one. Marker sits in his office, ruminating. How many chances do you get to cheat do? Beats me. Depends on what you're dealt, how you play your hand. It's hard to bluff when you're distracted. I'm not making excuses. I'm just saying the holidays should take part of the blame. The hype fell thicker than the goo on a jar of mayonnaise. The day danger knocks on my door. Usually I don't. Usually. Excuse me. Hey, what gives? Calling me before I could finish my rumination? Uh, don't blame me. You're the one who can hear the telephone ringing before I even dial. Anyway, I think you better scram. My sources at Santa Claus 3 have texted me that Charles Oscar Dumpstead has snapped out of the joint. He's hooked up with his pals from his days of throwing snowballs before you sent him to the principal's office. The slammer. The bar with no drink. I get the picture. The Incidentally, I, I think that uh, you should best look out, and uh, 
He oh, hangs up. Oh, now that's just rude. Uh, to ring off straight away, interrupting again. Here I've gone beyond the call of duty in warning you about your impeding doom, and you can't do so much as extend the common courtesy of listening to me or wishing me goodbye, let alone giving me a juicy news tip. A very unhappy holiday to your pretentious, leathery, Yankee Doodle Dandy Hyde. Andre Boo. That's when she entered. She looked familiar somehow. At least I wanted her to become familiar. My eyes were soaking her up like... You can dispense with the misogynistic paddle, Mr. Marker. Let's cut to the chase. I need a good private detective. If you're good, I've got a job for you. She reaches into her stocking and pulls out the note. If this is a bonus present for the job, I'll take it. She slaps him. And gives him the note. Let's take a closer look in the light, shall we? No, that's okay. I can see fine right here. Time to pay up, it says. Sign C O D. Todd. Those initials seem familiar somehow. Maybe it was a reference to that poker game I played in Cape Cod. But there are dots between the letters, so that must stand for something. Not that or not. Maybe it's a clue to some sort of code. Code. Todd. Sounds like E. In a final act of desperation, Pamela Swing Lilo takes off her shoe and dangles it seductively at the window. Uh, listen, I'm a man who wears many hats, but it's a dangerous life I lead, Miss Swing Willow. So I don't think you know what it's like to stand in my shoes. Uh, I hope you don't mind. I'm just making myself more comfortable. No, no, not at all. Pick up your heels. Both of them, if you want. Oh, on second thought, I don't want to get cold feet. Would you fetch me my shoe, Mr. Gumshoe? Anything for you, Angel? Marker moves over to the window, but does not move in the window's range. He picks up the shoe. Well, stand up. Stand in front of the window, you idiot. Oh, okay, but... So you want me to look at the window with me? Fine, you're sure it's strange damn. Just let me grab the shoe. He bends down. Suddenly, a thump fills the air. I was all, all caught up in your stocking, Angel. I never expected you to take the hit from me. Oh, neither did I. She faints. If only I had another chance. But this is what I deserve, I guess. Waiting for the shoe to drop. I am such a teal. Blackout. We move to scene three, rewinding to the exact same situation as scene one. Scene three, the exact same situation as scene one, with Marker doing the exact same thing. He picks up his cell phone. Cliff Marker, I say, uh, hello, Cliff. Uh, hang on, Cliff. This is Sydney Nib uh, at the rag sheet down the hall. Uh, hey, I didn't even get to finish my rumination. Yeah, that's, there's no time for that, my friend. Charles Oscar Dumpstead did a Houdini at Santa Claus 3, and he's out holiday shopping for revenge. The word on Twitter is he's paying quite handsomely for anyone who can take you out. If I were you, I would dive down the chimney fast. Thanks, Nib. I Here's a thought. Head to my office. They won't look for you here. But take that shortcut through the cafeteria. Not bad, Nib. And don't let any attractive women distract you on the way. <laughs> that could be a trap. <laughs> like I would ever fall for that. <laughs> Swing Willow goes behind Nib and hands him a fishnet stocking. She surprises oh. him with a caress. You are the sneaky one, aren't you? 
You like you are part of the rough and tumble crowd, aren't you, Sid? Is he on his way? Yes. Are you quite prepared to snare him along? Of, of course. Here's your hat. The fishnet stocking comes on. Mark my words, Marker. Take note, Cliff. At last, thanks to some help from a friend, I will have the last word. And you and your rude interruptions will experience, will experience the ultimate in punctuation. <laughs> 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 Marker, preparing to leave his office, hesitates. He pulls out his cooler and takes out an ice ball of his own. Well, it's a hunch, it's a change in the weather, or a strong itch. Somehow I always know when trouble comes, Polly. Well, almost always. Marker puts the snowball back in the cooler. He lifts up a foot at the edge of the desk and hoists up a pant leg, pulls down a sock to reveal he is wearing fish net stockings. Can we get a close-up of those? Thank you. Damn, what a shame. All all torn up. I guess that's what I get for taking stock of my stocking at a time like this. I mean, here I am. My hands almost played. My time almost out. The holiday's coming. And now, gotta run. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> you were watching... Stalking Doom, a presentation from the pulp stage. Music was provided by The Gun Drops and Mr. Hal Logan. It was adapted by Death Wears Fishnets author Brad Bolchunos. The players are Joel Durham, Nick Hovac, and Emily Gleason. I'm Tom Matt Haynes, and I'm the producer for Pulp Diction, a late night reading series where you have new plays of nearly every pulp genre, from superhero to psychopath, from science fiction to fantasy, to sleuth. It will be happening at the Brody Theater downtown on Broadway and Burnside, just two doors down from Portland Embers, and uh, show dates are January 24th, 26th, 27th, and 28th. Food and beer is available. Shows are open to all ages, though we strongly suggest mature viewers only. Parents, if you think your kids are already too misdirected by sex and violence in the media, leave the kids at home. Enjoy this one for yourselves. However, if going to see Watchmen or Inglorious Bastards was a family highlight for you this year, our house is your house. For tickets and info, please visit us at thepulpstage.weebly.com. Again, that's thepulpstage.weebly.com. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. That was the pulp stage. Thank you guys so much. Thanks. That was great. Thank you. All right. So um, I just I, I know we're all in the entertainment aspect, but I don't want us to forget a couple of very important things. One, uh, we're trying to raise money for some really really good charities. Yep. And those charities are Free Geek, Toys for Tots, and the Oregon Food Bank. Two. Uh, two weeks ago tomorrow, a single mother with two young boys, uh, her house burned down completely. And uh, she has a connection to Megan Kate, uh, the, uh, the f uh, family that is friends with someone in her family. And, and, and Megan Kate has been hugely instrumental in, in helping pull this whole thing off. Correct. So. But there are still some needs. I mean, they've, they've gotten some household goods and some things that they really, really needed just to, to be surviving. But Christmas is literally around the corner. I mean, we're, we're less than a week away. And I know that I haven't had time to do any of my Christmas shopping. And I know that they haven't had the time or the funds or the energy to do theirs. And what I was really hoping is I could tell you guys what it is that they need. She was more than happy to tell us what her boys need, not so happy to tell us what she needs, but we have some suggestions. So I'm just going to rattle off a list of what they need. We need uh, for the seven-year-old, young boy, clothing size eight, shoes size three, toys or gift certificates, but they're really into board games and sports, so baseball gear um, and basketball or other sports equipment. And for the older boy who's nine, clothing size ten, shoe size six, toys and gift certificates, Board games and any kinds of sports equipment at all, doesn't matter. The younger one's more into baseball, he's just into sports. And for the mother, um, clothing, they lost everything. Top, size medium, seven, eight bottoms. Um, she does not have vacuum cleaner, 
which doesn't seem like much of a luxury for Christmas, but if you don't have one and you've got kids, you really need one. Um, she lost all of her yoga DVDs, and that was a great source of joy for her. And uh, Megan added that she might like a spa gift certificate and that her car needs some work. So she might uh, like a mechanic gift certificate or a mechanic in the area that might volunteer their services. You can go ahead and contact us at 30 Hour Day on Twitter. Mm -hmm. um, yep. Or send a message to Megan Kate. Her email address is in the post on 30hourday.org that talks about this family. Uh, or if you need to drop stuff off, uh, let us know on Twitter and we'll make arrangements for it. Yeah, the title of that post is Giving Can't Wait. Correct. So look for that post. All right. And All right. now, producer Aaron, if you will. The stylings of Aaron. <laughs>
Oh, hi. We're back. Hmm. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you, Aaron. That was great. I'm going to enjoy saying that for the rest of the uh, yeah. afternoon. We're just going to keep him here and thank keep you, thanking Aaron. him thank over you, and over and over. It's nice to have someone to say thank you, aside from just you. Yeah, I know. I mean, I like thanking you for stuff and all Whatever, that. Whatever, dude. That's fine. I get where you're going with that one. You're if you want Aaron to come sit in the chair, he can come sit in the chair for no, a while. I That's like fine having too. You sit all in right, the chair. Okay, cool. Will you stay with me? Yeah, I'll be right Please. here. All 30 hours. Hey, right we're here. doing pretty good, right? Yeah, I guess. I, I don't know. So it's right. almost 1 o'clock. Wow, really? It's 12.41. That means 9 hours nine more. 9 hours and 19 minutes left. Yeah, that's awesome. How right? are we doing on the uh, the money? We could be doing better. Yeah? 2600 That's good. That's 2, good. Thank you, guys. Great. Thank you so much. That's awesome. And then 2620 because I still have Pete's 20 in my pocket. Oh, 20 in your pocket. In yeah, my that's pocket. Right. Good. That was the shut Excellent. up and eat breakfast yeah, cami money. That was the push us over the top money. Yeah, he really wanted me to eat that breakfast yeah. when it was warm. Cool. Awesome. So yeah. do you want to, or do you think the guys over there are ready for us? Oh, okay. Yeah? So okay. last night we had an opportunity to play a video from White and Kennedy Entertainment mm -hmm. called Don't move Don't here. Move Here. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. I was going to say don't live here. And I was like, well, that makes <laughs> Don't do sense. that either, but don't move here don't or move live here. Don't live here or live here. You heard me. You, oh, don't give me that look. All right, whatever. He's right. You can't. Yeah. So, and here we go. Oh, yeah, they're just going to cut us off. In Portland you've got people playing so many different kinds of music. The level of talent is off the charts. People are industrious, smart, savvy, clever, and totally weird. The things that happen here are pretty, are pretty remarkable and fairly different from what seems to go on in other parts of the, of, at least of the parts of the world that I've seen. I'm Shayla and welcome to the first episode of Don't Move Here. Today we're going to go to Northeast and visit Steve Schrader at the home of States Rights Records, his amazing small record label that he runs out of his house. Then we're going to go to the Artist Area, which is an incredible all-ages venue that's been around for a really long time, and see White Fang and explode into colors. One, two, three, go! Now you know that I'm the States Rights got started about year 2001. I went to school with a bunch of friends that made music, had bands that um, were my favorite bands in the world at the time. And they were making tapes just to pass amongst their friends. And those tapes really quickly became like my favorite albums. And that quickly made me realize that I could be putting out or like I could be involved with music that was like people's favorite music. So I toured with bands, driving and doing merch and worked kind of crummy jobs, saved money, started doing a couple seven inches and CDRs and that turned out pretty well. So just kept on ripping. Is there any common thread in the kind of music that Stage Rights puts out? I don't think, you know, they're certainly not all in the same genre and for the first few years of States Rights, there was, we were really holding on to this thing called n new genre, no genre music. Can you talk for a minute about um, the recent Jib Kidder phenomenon that you've been dealing with? Oh, sure. Uh, <laughs> you mean that it was on the Fox uh, television reality show, So You Think You Can Dance? Uh, yeah. So I put out this record by this guy who lives in San Francisco named Jib Kidder. The album is like totally sample based, um, hip hop mostly, but also sort of like experimental weirdo music too. And this one song that did pretty well on some MP3 blogs, which is called Window Dipper. We started to see it on YouTube a couple months ago um, that this uh, choreographer dude, Travis Wall, was performing some choreography to the song. And then I got a call from Fox um, when the season started saying that one of their contestants wanted to dance to that song. And we were like, sure, yeah. 
because that sounds fun. Also, because the song is like kind of questionable in legality. It contains samples of the Microsoft Windows operating system and some other samples that probably should have been clear. It was, it was a really fun concept to try to get that on national television on a big reality show on Fox. Did you have any kind of blueprint when you started the label? The way I run a label, I, I don't have, I don't, <laughs> I don't have a ton of money to invest in recording. So, um, but I think it's turned out great product. What are some of the upcoming releases that you're excited about? Going to do a White Fang record, who are like the young, uh, wild punk sort of prodigies of Portland. from the artistry. Aaron, how long has the artistry been going? Like, how did it get started? It was started um, in 2001 as a spiritual creative program. It's, it's a little bit different. It's an all ages venue. It's a, uh, there, there's living places, a little white house next door. There's a recording studio, dark room, a lot of facility stuff, and just basically open space to do whatever you want. so much time and energy into, you know, making a place like this? Well, I don't know. I think uh, being creative and being able to be creative has been pretty important to me. I've grown a lot from being forced to be around people, so I do it because I think it's good. And Hi. we're back. Hi there. Wow. Ooh. That was good. That was great. We just heard the sound check. We heard the sound check. Are we ready to go for good. the real thing now? Good. Yeah. We good. are? We're good to okay, go? Okay, so we're going to go and see Deanna and the Downbeats. You can find them at DeannaandTheDownbeats.com, or you can see them sometimes at Tony Starlights. Let's hand that over to them, and we're good to go. i 
Thank you so much. We are Deanna and the Downbeats from Portland, Oregon. So excited to be here with you today celebrating the holidays and the fantastic cause that 30-hour day is supporting. Thank you so much for having us. Back home again in Indiana And it seems Hold me close. 
song is a song that uh, my mom used to sing to me when I was a girl. And it actually made uh, very famous in the 50s by Teresa Brewer. And so we're going to give it our own little spin. And uh, I'm going to showcase some of my additional musical talents for you. dedicate that one to my mom who's actually in Indiana right now at this very moment. Probably not watching because she has dial-up modem, but I'm going to make sure she gets the recording on her VHS. Okay. <laughs> How about whatever one you want? Oh. Yep. Yeah. So this next tune comes from one of my very favorite musicals, Damn Yankees. And that was made popular in the 50s on Broadway. And uh, you'll hear this song out and about everywhere. And very few people know the story of how the song goes. I'm not going to tell it to you today because I want you to go out and research that show and make sure you're supporting musical theater in your area. But I want to give you a taste of uh, Damn Yankees here today.
but I think it just raised about 10 degrees here in Portland, Oregon. I'm not sure if it, if it carries over the broadband in the same way, but uh, whoo, man, that was hot, huh? All right. How about another favorite from one of my, um, my most endearing American musicals, Guys and Dolls? You know, there's a rumor that Frank Sinatra had the opportunity to be in so many American musicals, and he turned them down. And I have a little trivia for you today. It's kind of uh, pertinent to the season we're in, but he was actually offered the uh, second leading man role in the movie White Christmas with Bing Crosby, and he turned it down. Did you guys know that? Yeah, so Danny Kay decided to uh, slip his way in there, and of course now he's in America Cinnamon. Cinema history? Cinnamon history? <laughs> Hmm. It is the season. season for cinnamon. I guess it works out okay, huh? All right. 